In today's video, we're gonna be going over the top three Arena 13 decks right now in Clash Royale. This has been a heavily requested arena. Apparently, there's a ton of you guys in there right now, and we're gonna help you guys get out into Arena 14 and 15 and beyond right now. Clash Royale is obviously crazy with the meta being all over the place. There's bait decks, there's E-Giant still somewheres. There's literally random decks all over the place, especially in those little ladders. So, we're gonna show you guys exactly how to crush these little arenas and get past them, guys, with absolute ease. Before we get into deck number one, guys, I do want to remind you to make sure to subscribe down below to the channel. We are getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers so every single person subscribing down below it does mean a lot thank you but without further ado we're getting straight into deck number one here as you can see today mega knight so what am i what as you can see this log bait here with the princess the prince and rascals this version of log bait is so much fun to play with guys not only do you have the hunter to be able to take out down balloons the prince to take down golems and electro giants but you have the rascals to do constant support and tank just about for anything that's coming your way guys you have the log and fireball to apply a lot of pressure a lot of rascals log bait decks you will see the rocket boat this one's a much cheaper version with the goblin in there being your main way of doing tower damage now you can and outplay your opponent, get so much damage that way, but this deck in Arena 13 is going to absolutely crush. So as we found the tournament here, guys, I want to say welcome to today's video, and obviously these decks are only going to be as good as the player that's playing them. You need to listen to what I'm saying, you need to follow the steps, because if you are vibing with this type of playstyle, then that'll 100% help you guys win. If you're playing these wrong, you will 100% lose, even with the best deck in the world. So, it's all about playstyle, it's all about knowing what you got to do when and how to cycle. So the princess here first play is always a solid first play, guys. It'll bait out a play from the opponent, and it's only three legs. So, hey, if he spends a ton of elixir trying to defend it, or sorry, yeah, trying to defend it and then make a counter push, that's going to be always in your favor. As you can see, we go with a bunch of stuff here. He's not going to have the best elixir to deal with this, and most likely, unless he has a big spell or something, this is going to cause a bit of havoc, guys. Even a Valkyrie. The Val Fireball is going to be a great answer, but even the Fireball, guys, is going to allow us to do a bunch of damage there with the Hunter getting two shots. That is too good. We are literally at a 700 damage lead, all from just a really aggressive princess at the bridge, guys. That is how it works. That is what you want to do, and we're going to go ahead and cycle some skeleton in the back there's no reason to be crazy here and we're gonna go ahead and goblin barrel off to the right here we know he's got pekka coming up in that same lane but the goblins will be able to do some damage here and nice we do force out a log that is what we like to see and since he just went with his fireball and log pretty close together we're gonna go for our princess in the back knowing he really can't spell it down guys we're gonna go ahead go for our prince in the back to charge up at this pekka and then we will distract the pekka here with our rascals and then one unit skeletons up here to distract our prince guys really not gonna be the best defense but check it out we will take everything down here the rascals luckily do uh, go down for him obviously that's gonna be excellent for him guys we're gonna probably see a defensive fireball here maybe not he does not have the elixir guys so the zap will come out the uh, prince will actually two shot that electro wizard and the goblin behind the tower will do a bunch of damage so although he did a bunch of damage to our left side very well played he does end up taking a, a big amount of damage on that right side as well so really we're both in an interesting situation guys we knew the mega minion was coming down don't really want to commit any crazy elixir over there but we're gonna go ahead and play, play our hunter he says well played thank you very much Sir, we know that Hogger is coming. The Hunter was a bad play. We honestly, honestly, looking hindsight, we should have let that Mega Minion just go. That was terrible. That is not going to be what we want to see. Well, let's go ahead and let this Hunter go as well, guys. This is not going to be the best for us. This is not going to be the best. Hunter does go down. Well, let's go ahead and get ready to log this. We can go with our one unit skeletons, which honestly will not be too bad here. It will distract the Dark Prince. We're going to go for a Prince in the left lane here. Does he get a Hog Rider down? He's going to go Pekka there. Wow. All right, let's go ahead and go with our Goblin Barrel. And then we will immediately potentially... Uh, no, I was thinking about Fireballing if he went with an Electro Wizard. But yeah, he goes to he just goes Fireball of his own. So that's well played. Prince will get a charge off on that Pekka, which is what you love to see. He goes with the Hog Rider, guys. We will be able to defend this Hog Rider flawlessly. Assuming the Hunter gets one shot. Nice, he does. The Log comes out. Going to be well played. Let's go ahead and go with our Skeletons. Let's go ahead and go with the Prince left lane. Because we can do damage to the right tower with our Fireball and Log. He does not necessarily necessarily have that same uh same luxury guys because as you can see he still has a way more tower damage to do than us so this is going to lead him to be in a rough weird spot let's go ahead and goblin barrel on defense here do we see a hog gonna come down no the prince is gonna make a connection guys i don't think he's gonna give up a oh no he does give up that's what i'm saying he is going to give up after that uh play incredible game guys to start this off obviously not the easiest matchup in the world but we're still crushing this guy gammy number one with the arena 13 deck is absolutely insane guys all three of these decks by the way are going to be linked down below and if you're going to try any of these decks out do me a solid by leaving a like on the video guys it helps the video out it helps the channel so everyone watching thank you for that so overall you guys see this deck synergy is through the roof you have the princess for some chip you have the goblin barrel to bait out some things and overall if you do that on play style you'll be in a great position against many many matchups so that has been deck number one deck number two today is a 
Fireball Zappies the Fighting Machine the Royal Hogs deck, aka Fireball Bait, 3.9 average likes cost in Arena 13. This deck is going to absolutely dominate. Like I said with the last one, this one certainly has a different play style though, so pay attention, guys. You want to make sure you're playing this one slow, building up pushes, and waiting until two times elixir. With all of these really strong cards together, obviously, ideally, you want to get those huge pushes to three count your opponents, but overall, it's going to be more of a slow roll deck. We're going against Ghoul here. Good luck, man. He's going to need it. These Royal Hogs are obviously so strong in the current meta, helping this deck out a ton, and normally, you do not want to go Electro Spear first play. You want to go for the Electro Spear first play, only if it's on a defensive sort of counter like that, and then we can go with our Goblin Cage, guys. Goblin Cage is not terrible. The Electro Spear wasn't really placed the best, hence why the Goblin Bro uh, sorry, the uh, Barb Bro got a uh, little hit off there. Not the end of the world, though. He goes for that. We're going to let this honestly walk up and tag that up, and then once it targets that, we're going to go ahead and do that, and if he has a fireball that's about to come down now, then we go the Roll Hogs, and Barb Barrel, he has just made a monumental error. Unless he has some sort of more splash damage, this is going to get numbers on his tower, guys. That is just playing slow, being patient, knowing when to strike, because this is literally going to be almost half a tower down, if not more. The Flying Machine's going to walk up. Probably wasn't necessary, the Flying Machine, but it will force out more Elixir, which we always are welcoming here, guys. That is a beautiful amount of damage to start this one off, and just like the last match, just by playing it smart and knowing how to play this deck, we already have a massive damage lead, even though we don't necessarily deserve one, guys. Let's go ahead and Electro Spirit this. We only want that to get, what, one hit off? Not a big deal over there, and on the left tower, we really are taking that down nicely. So let's go ahead and go with the Goblin Cage, and this time, I don't think he'll be so sure of himself when he goes with that Flying Machine at the bridge. He does it, though, anyways? Why? Why would you do this to yourself? Guys, if he goes with another Fireball here, buddy, he's throwing. He's throwing. Why would he do that? Even though we did not actually kill the flying machine that time, he doesn't have any answers to this, guys. He has the goblin brawler, and he's got his stuff. But other than that, I mean, our flying machine will literally be able to clean up all of this, including the uh, flying machine of his, the barbarian bell, and we, have, we only have the electro spear. And even though it wasn't the most damage there, because we did not play it necessarily the best, we are still going to get even more damage lead there, leading to a pretty poggers play. Let's go ahead and go for a uh, barbarian bell here on these zappies. Can we take him down? Oh, we will. That barbarian bell timing was beautiful, guys taking down all four of the zappies with just two elixir that'll help out a big amount because obviously we were a little bit further behind on elixir than he was so the fact that we were able to do all that was awesome for us let's go ahead and go with our goblin cage he's gonna go for the flying machine again we're gonna let him do it and this time we're gonna wait we realize that the goblin brawler tanking obviously is going to be better for the zappies he might fireball this he might not if he goes for the fireball here we're gonna go for some royal recruits he's not going to go for the fireball he's going for his royal recruits we're going for our royal recruits who will succeed on top we have a flying machine he does not that is gonna be a key uh thing in this fight guys we should have saved up to our, for our fireball here because this is going to do a little bit of work here but we're going to keep on splitting up our pushes and just crushing so obviously we had so many units on the playing field we're actually going to be all right there and take everything down he's probably going to go for a flying machine somewhere around here um, I wouldn't be surprised, would not be surprised, guys, let's go ahead and go with our Royal Hogs, let's go ahead and go with another Flying Machine, and the Fireball comes out, but that will not hit our other Flying Machine, the right tower is also taking numbers, guys, can we say good game here, he does say it, guys, these decks are crushing in these tournaments, let alone in Arena 13, it's not even going to be close, guys, you're going to be dominating in Arena 13, playing it smart, having fun, and as long as obviously, of course, your card levels are there, so awesome game for the game number two there, guys, um, that is what we like to see, once again, a banger match, so that has been it for game number to obviously there we were playing slow countering the opponent and those counter pushes in that last match were unbeatable guys you couldn't stop him he was just too much damage and power in each of those pushes so that's exactly how you want to play this deck here deck number two of three and deck number three the final one of the day is going to be a hog quake cycle deck potentially the hardest one to play but it also has a really high skill cap meaning if you get really good with this deck you're actually going to be able to outplay a lot of opponents here even if they might have matchup this deck can absolutely crush so let's go ahead first play split up some archers in the back and let's go ahead and knight here guys the knight placement there is essential obviously it's going to tank for those spear goblins and it's going to kill the miner by also distracting him guys beautiful beautiful stuff there let's go ahead and go for our bomb tower here um bomb tower is going to need to be really aggressive obviously just to make sure we can distract that magic archer and we're going to go with the hog rider of our own now right here he probably will sneak down a tesla no he has nato honestly not good for us at all the nato certainly hard counters us but i mean there is hope the archer gets some damage. We have our Quake, Log, and Snowball to all do some damage. So can we make something happen here? I sure do think so. Let's go ahead, go for our Snowball. The Snowball here is going to be beautiful in taking down both Wall Breakers for just two Elixir. That is an awesome card. Let's go ahead and go for our Archers. Let's go ahead and Log. Since we do not have the Snowball and Cycle, the Miner will go down here. The Magic Archer coming across the bridge, guys. We're going to go ahead and Knight that. He is spending so much Elixir at the bridge, making me want to go for a Hog Rider left lane, guys. He cannot NATO everything. 
The bomb tower is going to be distracted here, guys. He might get some spear goblins down or something, but the uh, hog rider hopefully will be able to take this out. I'm not sure if it will. Skeletons come down for those wall breakers, guys. Going to be able to deal with those beautifully there. And even though we really didn't get any more damage on the left side, we did defend everything, and we are still forcing out elixir. So those archers there on the miner, you can't get much better than that, guys. Going to absolutely crush that miner, cause him to die with only one hit on the board. Beautiful stuff. We're going to go ahead and go with a... Um, I mean, we're gonna wait. We're gonna go for a log. Probably should have gone with a snowball, but honestly, that is all right. Um, we see a magic archer. Let's go ahead and go with our knight. Boom! Knight gets down just in time. And this time, we're gonna save up, guys, for our hog rider. So if he goes to the bomb tower, we're gonna quake instantly. Um, because, yeah, the bomb tower is coming down. Let's go ahead and just quake that. And that is gonna be really bad for him, guys. He's gonna need to go for a NATO of some sort. We'll go ahead and skeletons that. He does log. Let's go ahead and go with our snowball. Can we get it down? We do! And the hog rider will get a shot in hand because he did not play that right, guys. We're gonna wait for his miner for a second. We're gonna go for some archers, actually. We're gonna go for some archers in the front and the knight. The archers tank up those shots. We are playing really well right now. So as long as we can keep doing this and getting these little bits of damage while defending everything perfectly, I mean, we are gonna be sitting in a great position, guys. Let's go ahead and quake and log this. I honestly do not care if that's not a lot of elixir. The, mega, uh, the magic archer will go down there. But let's go ahead Ahead. go for this go for this go for this we're gonna take it all down here hopefully those wall breakers die guys beautiful play there. gonna allow us to be a little bit crazy here with the bomb tower placement the miner comes down let's go ahead and knight that miner and knight will fight it out miner's gonna do a little bit of chip damage there but we're just gonna keep on earthquaking him down he might go for a magic archer here guys we got to recognize that so the magic archer does come down let's see if it can target our knight nope it's gonna target the bomb tower and then it'll target our knight and then we go for some archers guys oh shoot okay misplay there we have to be quite careful here we're gonna predict the wall breakers coming out any second no no wall breakers come out let's go ahead and go with our bomb tower the spear gaps are all gonna die and now we can go ahead and uh, hog rider this we can go ahead and quake and that bomb tower should be able to deal with all those guys so that quake spell is gonna be beautiful it misses wow okay the quake does completely whiff let's go ahead and go knight and skeletons and archers we're trying to kill this all out right now guys let's go ahead and log we do take it all down this is stressful though. i'm sorry if the commentary is getting a little crazy here but it's a hectic match let's see if we can get a bomb tower down guys big value here out of our bomb tower is going to be seen we're going to go ahead and night we're going to go ahead and go for the uh, snowball snowball's going to be nice guys going to take it all down and we're going to get ready to go for another hog rider and quake obviously that placement of his bomb tower was really really nice so let's go ahead and go for a uh, hog rider and quake and then if he goes with the bomb tower high, we just archers. We just archers, guys. He's not going to be able to get a bomb tower down. That's going to be a hog rider nearly on the tower. And the archers will help us snipe that down. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Let's go ahead and bomb tower this of our own. We'll go with the knight. We're going to go ahead and snowball all of this. Obviously, that knight placement's not going to be ideal with that magic archer ripping into us. But the log will knock the magic archer off range of our tower. Very, very intense match. I mean, this is certainly not the easiest matchup in the world. We're going to go ahead and quake on defense here. We're going to go over with some skeletons in the back. And then we got to be really careful with these knights, guys. Let's go ahead and knight. Let's go ahead and get ready to go here with the hog rider. Let's go ahead and go on in with our log. And let's get our snowball and quake, guys. We do hit that quake this time. Quake's going to be doing some work. Let's go ahead and bomb tower this. We, got, we see the magic archer. And the knight's down. The hog rider gets a shot off on the left. And that is going to be calling for a lot of spell spam, guys. The log comes down. The snowball comes down. And the quake will go ahead and finish that off. Nine HP left. Are you kidding me? Too clean. A very fun match there. And Banjo. Banjo. Going down. Awesome game here, guys. A lot of fun today. Obviously, we crushed with all three of these decks. In Arena 13, it's not going to be fair. Assuming your card levels are there, assuming your game style is there, and you're just ultimately going to have a ton of fun with these decks, guys. So 3.3 over Deluxe across 3.9 and 2.8. Very fast, very fun. Besides deck number two, more of a control style deck, but uh, decks one and three here, guys, completely skill based. If you're losing with them, it's certainly either card levels or skill. One or the other, guys. Um, they take practice. Obviously, I'm definitely a log bait player, so that naturally will help me with these type of decks. I know how to play Hog Cycle. I know how to play Princess Log Bait. But overall, with practice comes perfection, guys, or at least close to it. So you'll be able to absolutely dominate in Arena 13. And I truly hope this video helped you guys. So thank you all so much for tuning in to today's video. Have a great day, everybody. Like I said, if you're going to watch until the end and you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below, guys. But hopefully you have a good day. Thank you all so much for watching. Master Diddy-san, out. Hey.